Yeah. Barcodes, invoices, and this is medical. I mean, I'm not even going in and I can grab this data. I'm Jason E. Street. I'm a hacker and uh, I rob banks for a living. I do pen testing. It's like finding vulnerabilities to better protect the client. I'm wearing a DEF CON leather jacket and red Thundercat tennis shoes and within two minutes and 22 seconds, I'm behind your teller line and I go, I walked in, you've got a problem. You may want to address that. If you ever look at a bank robbery, when a guy comes up with a ski mask and a shotgun, he doesn't usually end up having a great day. But when I walk in with a jacket and jeans, I'm here with Microsoft, I'm here to make the network faster. I am telling you, and their answer is going to be, yeah, it is running a little slow. What door do you need open? Computers are really good tools to commit crimes with nowadays. When you're doing a pen test, you're trying to recreate the scenario of an actual attacker. I sit down with the client and tell them, this is what I would like to do. I could like steal all your corporate secrets this way. Then I do like a three day engagement. I spend like the first day or two being the worst thing to happen to you at the worst possible time in the worst possible way. Usually, I can walk in to a place and just go, you know, hi, and I'm in. And I plug in my USB drive, like a Hack5 rubber ducky. It operates a code that can compromise the machine. That's on easy mode. But on that third day, I come back with a representative of the company so the employees know that I'm legit and then educate them on what I did and how I did it. I'm trying to make sure everybody is comfortable with what happened. Make sure they turn that into a positive lesson instead of a negative one. That's why penetration testing is so important. Now, if someone else goes in and they don't have authorization, they're not going to be able to get in. And we're recording. Okay, in a little bit. Right. Penetration testing is basically a social engineering engagement. Most employees have that voice in the back of their head going, this ain't quite right. Could you let me in real quick? And they're looking at me, and I can tell by their face, they know I don't effing belong there. And then they go, okay. They don't want to be rude. They don't want to, like, cause waves. I was in Amman, Jordan, robbing a bank there, and I, I don't know uh, too much Arabic. Whatever. I start walking in like I own the place, go straight down the farthest cubicle I can have access to, and I plug in my USB drive. And then I go to the next one. And the bank manager comes up to me and she's like, you can't be doing that. And I'm like, you're right. If you don't think I should be doing this, it's like we should definitely contact somebody. I compromised five machines. She realized something was wrong, but she wasn't trained to counteract that because I didn't have a ski mask on. I did not fit the pattern. And so I was like, you know what? I've got some paperwork in my car. She said, yes, you need to go get the paperwork. And they let me leave. But I'm trying to get caught. I'm trying to create a teachable moment. So one of my best engagements that I've ever been on was this year. I had pen tested the company the year before. And this year, they caught me several times. That shows me that my job that I did last year worked. I always tell people, every person on this planet was born a hacker. Every one of us. It's like that innate curiosity of a child that said, this is what we're told it's supposed to be. Let's do something different. The key thing is questions. Why did you get that email? Why does it have that link? Were you expecting that email from that person? And there's also this wonderful device. It's like, it's a great hacking device. This thing, you can make phone calls with it. Call the person up like, did you send me this sketchy looking email? 
No one wants to talk to Bob in accounting, but just question. Could you let me in? I, I just went to the bathroom and I didn't have my badge. When you're living in a dumpster fire, you've got two choices. Go get marshmallows and watch it burn, or try to put it out. That's what motivates me. Not just showing where it's broken, but showing people how to make it better.